Well, the president is expected to sign a bill today raising the debt ceiling. The House passed the temporary measure Tuesday after the Senate did the same last Thursday. This means Congress will have to revisit the issue in a matter of weeks, as the new deadline has been pushed to December 3rd. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes is following the latest from the White House. Hi, Nancy. So this will buy everyone a little more time to sort out the debt ceiling, um, but not that much more time. How is the White right. House preparing for another potential showdown with Republicans on a long-term solution? Well, it really depends on how quickly they can get their other big agenda items off their plate. They're so focused right now on getting the president's big signature piece of legislation, this $2 trillion or so uh, social spending bill over the finish line, uh, that that is really consuming both Democrats and the White House alike right now. If they can get that done, then they're going to need to focus on what they do about the debt ceiling. Because the problem is, while uh, this, uh, this short-term bill has bought them some time, they could be pushed right back into the corner that they wanted to avoid the first time, which is Republicans saying to them, we're not going to help you at all to raise this debt ceiling. You need to do it on your own. You need to use this process known as reconciliation, which takes a couple of weeks to do it. And that is a precedent that Democrats really, really don't want to set. They don't want to get into this situation every single time they have to raise the debt ceiling, that they use this time-consuming process that Republicans just kind of uh, abdicate responsibility for helping them. And Democrats then get the blame when the debt continues to climb. They know that Republicans Republicans, when they're running for re-election next year, will argue, look, Democrats had to raise the debt because they want to spend so much. And the Democratic response is, no, we had to raise the debt because debt ceiling because of spending that was approved by both Democrats and Republicans. So that is the pickle they're in right now. Uh, and they mm -hmm. would spend more time trying to think about how to get out of it. But they're so focused on this other big social spending bill that, uh, you know, they're really putting it off, uh, putting it to the side for now. Right. The pickle remains on the side. Um, so, Nancy, meanwhile, applications for unemployment benefits continue to drop. Today's numbers follow President Biden's comments yesterday on two major issues hurting the economy, rising inflation and the supply chain. So is there any concern within the White House that the administration is not doing enough on economic messaging? I think there's a big concern at the White House that they don't have enough tools to address all the economic problems that persist as a result of the pandemic. Yes, messaging is important, but what's even more important is making sure that the economy gets back on track, dealing with inflation, dealing with the supply chain issues, even as the White House acknowledges that when it comes to the supply chain problems, uh, the, the best thing that they can do really is bring all the stakeholders together, you know, when it whether it's shippers or or um, the ports or the unions or uh, big box retailers and try to get them all working together to get the kinks out of the system. But in terms of policies that the White House can enact or even legislation that they could push Congress to enact, they really don't have that many levers at their disposal, which is frustrating because they know that every White House gets judged on how good the economy is while that president is in office. So that is definitely a top of mind concern as we head into a midterm election year. Right. And, and Nancy, I also want to ask you about the president's commission examining the Supreme Court. What have we learned about its recommendations? What we know is that this commission uh, has not embraced what so many progressives were hoping they would embrace, which is adding more justices to the court. Many progressives believe that that's the only way in the short term that you can even out the number of new conservative justices that were added to the court by Donald Trump. Uh, some of those justices, Democrats believe, were added unfairly. Um, and this commission, which is made up of uh, Supreme Court lawyers, professors, what have you, uh, they really argued that not only would adding more justices to the court, maybe making it, you know, a 15-member court instead of a nine-member court, not only would that cause the court to be viewed as illegitimate by some, but also it would really slow down the workings of the court. If you had that many more justices who all had to weigh in, 
um, you know, who all had to be uh, considered on every single decision. And so that is going to be something of a disappointment for progressives. They are tackling a number of other interesting issues as well. Uh, term limits is something that uh, many court watchers have argued should be in place. Why do Supreme Court justices, why are they among the only officials in the world who get to hold their positions for life? Um, and it, it does appear that there are many on this commission who agree that perhaps terms should be limited to 12 years or 18 years. But the problem is, how do you impose that? Uh, do you pass a law that says that Supreme Court justices uh, need to have these term limits? Would that be viewed as legitimate? Or do you have to build it into the Constitution itself? And if you do, you know, we all know how difficult it is to add anything to the U.S. Constitution. That is a really fraught process. And so uh, these are the kinds of thorny issues that this um, this commission has tackled. The commission doesn't necessarily give the president recommendations and say, we think you should do this and we think you should do that. They're really there to kind of look at some of these big issues holistically and weigh in with what they think about them. And then the White House can do with that information what it will. Right. It's really interesting uh, theoretical work. All right. Well, Nancy Cordes at the White House, thank you so much. You're welcome.